How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Down to Earth with Christian Harloff. This is our Monday through Friday show where we give you the latest in the world of the UAP phenomenon. There's a lot of stories that happen every day, and we try to sift through them, see what's going on, and we talk about it. And sometimes we get ahead of it. Look, look at this. I saw that News Nation, who I was, I've been criticizing a little bit lately for kind of falling off the UAP bandwagon, I guess, for a little bit, and they, uh, they posted a bunch of stuff yesterday. And one of those was the New York... UAP video that we showed on this show like three weeks ago, but it seems like everybody's talking about that one now. So good. I'm glad it's getting more into the uh, zeitgeist. So I guess we're doing something right. I guess there's something that you guys are helping us out do as well. And we are, I think, close to 21,000 right now subscribers. So we're trying to get to 50, kind of move it. So if you're brand new to the channel, hit that button. Now, here's one of the big stories here, too. As we've seen, there was a lot of other ones that we were going through. There was something, I was originally going to do something about the, um, there was a fire in the Roswell area, but then it turned out it wasn't as serious as everybody thought it was. So we're like, okay, well, what's the other big story going around? And we went with this one. So the Arrow Twitter account puts out this report, which says, Today, Arrow released its resolution for the case known as the Eglin UAP. It presents Arrow's analysis of a January 2023 event reported by a military pilot operating in the Eglin Air Force Base training range off the coast of Florida. So then they posted this whole thing. It's like, okay, well, here you go. It probably it's a lot of nothing to see here type of, um, type of data inside of this report. And then Matt Gates responded with this. He said, last year, when I attempted to receive a briefing with the flight crew who witnessed the UAP at Eglin Air Force Base, the Air Force tried to block me. This report by Arrow is incomplete. It does not reflect all of the information that I was shown. I believe all the information regarding the sighting should be released to the public, including pictures from the pilot and radar signatures. Interesting. So I'm going to play this video Several months ago, my office received a protected disclosure from Eglin Air Force Base indicating that there was a UAP incident that required my attention. I sought a briefing regarding that episode and brought with me Congressman Burchett and Congresswoman Luna. We asked to see any of the evidence that had been taken by flight crew in this endeavor and to observe any radar signature uh, as, long as, to, as well as to meet with the flight crew. We were not afforded access to all of the flight crew. And initially, we were not afforded access to images and to radar. Thereafter, we had a bit of a discussion about how authorities flow in the United States of America, and we did see the image. And we did meet with one member of the flight crew who took the image. The image was of something that uh, I am not able to attach to any human capability, either from the United States or from any of our adversaries. And I'm somewhat informed on the matter, having served on the Armed Services Committee for seven years, having served on the committee that oversees DARPA and advanced technologies for several years. Um, when we spoke with the flight crew, and when he showed us the photo that he'd taken, I asked why the video wasn't engaged, why we didn't have a FLIR system that worked. Here's what he said. They were out on a test mission that day over the Gulf of Mexico, and when you're on a test mission, you're supposed to have clear airspace, not supposed to be anything that shows up. And they saw a sequence of four craft in a clear diamond formation for which there is uh, a radar sequence that I and I alone have observed in the United States Congress. One of the pilots goes to check out that diamond formation and sees a large floating, what I can only describe as an orb, Again, like I said, not of any human capability that I'm, that I'm aware of. And when he approached, he said that his radar went down, he said that his FLIR system malfunctioned, and that he had to manually take this image um, from one of the lenses, and it was not automatic, automated uh, in collection, as you would typically see in a test mission. So uh, I guess I'll start with Commander Fravor. In, how should we think about the fact that this craft that was approached by our pilot uh, had the capability of disarming a number of the sensor and collection systems on that craft? Well, I think this goes to that national security side, and you can go back through history of 
things showing up at certain areas and disabling our capabilities, which is disheartening. And for us, I mean, like I said, it, it completely disabled the radar on the aircraft when it tried to do it. And the only way we could see it is passively, which is how he got that image. So I think that's a, that's a concern on what are these doing, not only how do they operate, but their capabilities inside to do things like this. And, and how should we think about forecraft moving in a very clear formation, equidistant from one another, um, in a diamond? I, I, in all of the phenomenon, perhaps, Mr. Grave, that you've analyzed, um, have we ever seen multiple craft in a, in a single formation? I have one particular case, and that was uh, during the gimbal incident. Um, the recording on the AT flare system shows a single object that rotates. Um, you hear the pilots refer to a, a fleet of objects that is not visible on the FLIR system. And, and that was something that I witnessed during the debrief as part of the radar data on the situational awareness page. I would like to add, however, Congressman, uh, there's a small, uh, small bit of uh, uh, anger, I would say, I would feel that those pilots are still uh, facing that difficulty in reporting this topic and they don't have the tools to be able to mitigate this issue. It just goes to show how serious this is and why this is such an important issue for our pilots and for our nation. It was stated explicitly to me by these test pilots that if you have a UAP experience, the best thing you can do for your career is forget it and not tell anyone. Because any type of reporting, either above the surface or below the surface, uh, does have a perceived consequence to these people, and that is a culture we must change if we want to get to the truth. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I would observe that perhaps as we, uh, as we move forward from this hearing, there are some obvious next steps. Every person watching this knows that we need to meet with Mr. Grush in a secure compartmentalized facility so that we can get fulsome answers that do not put him in jeopardy and that, and that give us the information we need. Second, I would suggest that the radar images from, um, that were collected of this formation of craft out of Eglin Air Force Base, and specifically the actual image taken by the actual flight crew that we can actually validate um, be provided to the committee, subpoenaed if necessary, um, so that we're able to track how to get this type of reporting and analysis done in a more fulsome way. That would be my recommendation, humbly, as a guest here of the Fine Oversight Committee. Right. So there's a lot there. So much there, because now that clip, obviously, that we just showed was from the hearings back in um, July, I believe. And now there's a follow up to it as they said, well, here, here's that you, you guys are talking about that case in Florida and this is what we do. Arrow. So here's the report. And we're going to do the same thing that kind of we talked about the other day with Timber Chet, redacted stuff, things that weren't in there. And Gates goes, well, I've seen this thing and the thing that I saw isn't in there. So. Or at least that, show that, and let people make a judgment for it, because I can tell you that I saw that. So that part of it, to me, wasn't the smartest play by error when you know that somebody outside of it has actually seen something. He didn't say what it was. He just said, I've seen something in there that you didn't. Now, there's also another report that Matt Laszlo from Ascapol had both uh, Gates, Luna, and I think uh, a few other people. I don't know. If, I don't think Moskowitz. I think it was just maybe it was just Gates and Luna. But had seen – there was a report they had seen a body, and then there was nothing – actual confirmation on it, you know, any of those types of things. But was that the same thing? Was that – uh, you know, part of this, I don't think so. I think this is just a matter of maybe a clearer image of a, of a ship itself. But to get a little bit more insight on this, I want to bring in Pavel, and here he is. All right, there he is, Pavel. First of all, thanks for joining me as always. Hey, happy to be here, man. Happy to have you. So, yeah, we as, as I said, we had gone through a couple different stories of what we wanted to cover and it does seem like there's a lot of things that are happening right now obviously but to me it is very important when people inside of the government start sniffing around again and making noise about it because that to, is going to how to me going to move the needle a little bit more but you see this you heard about this at the hearings um this particular case and now arrow's kind of doing what arrow does and puts this out there do you feel that i got it right there what i'm saying that they redacted some stuff or you'd like, no this is what they have and it is what it is and gates is kind of making much ado about nothing here they shot themselves in the foot i think arrow because uh, out of all the uap caucus members although gates is not it's not technically part of it he is part of the uap caucus you know he's not like uh he's not uh written in he hasn't signed any documents or anything he's involved he's, part he's of involved the group. yeah and he's part of the armed services committee so technically he's the one out of all the caucus who has 
the highest clearance. So if if anybody wants to show something, he will be one of the few people there who can actually see the top classified stuff. So whatever he saw, he did mention that um, these uh, had uh, seemed to show capabilities that uh, human tech can't uh, have, which is strange to me because in that tweet he mentions images, but in that video he alludes that he may have seen a, a footage, not a, not a picture. So I did ask him in the tweet, but he didn't respond. Obviously, uh, he, he must be too busy. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, Arrow shot themselves in the foot essentially. It seems like, and we and I I mentioned Matt Laszlo, and here is something that he had re responded to Gates's tweet, and this is what he said. Just writes back, interesting, and inside of that, there's a new exclusive. He says, top Democrat on House Intel, Representative Jim Heim says that Congress isn't investigating incursions over sensitive military sites, even as an increasing numbers of U.S. senators are raising the alarm. So that plays into, you know, all of this stuff here. What we're talking about is so that people are raising alarms, and yet they're saying they're not doing any investigations. And I also think that Matt Lazo, I think it was yesterday, asked somebody, I don't remember who it was, um, did you listen, have you looked into any Grush's claims? Have you looked, and they just kind of laughed it off, like, no. So they still think there's a very high-level amount of people who are not taking this serious. I think there's another side of it of people who know that they can't investigate it or have certain things, and they can't say certain things. Um and there's just it is it goes back to the frustration side of it all of all right well if you get somebody out here the, with this high level of government again saying no i saw this i saw this release this it feels like to me it's going to be one of those things a show like ours somebody else will talk about it for a second and then there'll be another sh thing tomorrow and arrow knows yeah, let them yell and, and scream and talk about, let us show it. But we released our report, and that's it. I think also that um, since it's, it's election year, uh, everybody wants to be focused on that right now. Yep. So they want to focus on uh, keeping their position. Uh, and that may be a reason this is stalling, too. But they have to keep in mind, all those 40 whistleblowers, uh, we, we've seen uh, that many of us are, like, a little desperate now because nothing is really happening and some whistleblowers may be uh, legit ones may be trying to seek for other avenues to disseminate the information and we are one of these places also uh we saw the sand story go through twitter spaces which is not ideal but there are many 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 places where someone could go in and just drop a bomb you know yeah it is but i mean i'm even looking dude at, at this um overall report from Matt Laszlo and let me let me read a little bit to you okay so Laszlo's talking to Himes here and he says hey I was curious I know that UAPs aren't really on your radar to which Himes laughs and he said how about UA UAS is because we're hearing from a lot of senators Tim Kaine complaining about it over Langley and Senate Intel chair Mark Warner just brought it up too to which Himes says what's a UAS and then Laszlo says no way. yeah so, which uh, Matt Lazlo says, unmanned aerial systems. And then the report is, systems? Yeah, I mean, they, Mark Kelly says it's drones that were, and then Heim says, wait, we're not talking about extraterrestrial stuff here. And then Lazlo says, UAS, no, no. And then Heim says, okay, sorry, I thought you said UAPs. So Lazlo said, I know you guys aren't investigating that, but we're hearing complaints of a persistent problem of the invasion of U.S. airspace above sensitive military and nuclear sites. A lot of staffers are bringing this up regularly to Joint Chiefs of Staffs. And then Heim says, yeah, there's always a risk. Yeah, yeah. And then it just kind of goes back to back. But it's like, this is concerning. This yeah. is concerning. And, and in, in the way that, like, you can see it, and it reminds me of when Governor Christie or former governor, I don't know what the hell he is now, but when he was running for uh, the, the candidacy for the Republicans and they asked him about the UAP stuff and he he did the same thing that we're normally accustomed to doing. He's like, I'm the guy that gets the alien stuff. And it's like, yeah. it's that same type of thing where you automatically relate it to the to extraterrestrials and, and aliens and all that type of things. And people ought, uh, right away go, uh, and this guy who's who's someone, he doesn't even know about the stuff flying over the bases. I mean, what the hell are they doing in there? And this isn't, we're not talking about aliens. We're talking about this is clearly, as we see people tweeting it out, there are things flying over Langley 
there and even when I asked uh, a little while ago, they said uh, who is uh, that that drone comment, and this guy wasn't even aware of the drone comment. And it, so that's that's a concern. That's the reason Matt Laszlo's work is so important, man, because he makes sure that he moves away from that stigma by asking them about the technical aspect of technology, yeah, potential threat from other countries, because that's the only way they want to look at it. And I think that's important because that will give Matt a chance to get like a catch a moment if they stumble, you know? Yeah, that's if it happens, though. And I, I just, and the, I think there's going to be more things politically that come up. This just shows you this is not on the radar for most people. There's like a handful of people that are doing it. There's a hand, handful of places that are reporting on it. Good on News Nation that they decided to do three or four videos on it yesterday. Maybe they'll step back into the game. I don't know, but it still doesn't take away from the fact that nobody's reporting on it at all. These uh, things, and even if uh, like you know, there's certain outlets that are going to report on certain senators and certain people in Congress talking about things, and there's others that won't. But this is, is as, as bipartisan as this topic is within those people in Congress, it seems that the level of disinformation is a bipartisan thing among the news groups. Yeah. So anyway. Well, all right, Pavel, as always, thank you for joining me here today. I wonder if we'll get anything more from these cases or not. So thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, man. So there you go. That's uh, that's another report out there, and it seems like there's information that people have seen. There's pictures that people have seen, but yet it's being blocked by Arrow. What's the what's the overall goal here by Arrow and the DoD? It just seems like it just seems like misinformation for sure. Because if you're gonna, it, it goes back to that report that we had with Burchett yesterday, where he said things are being didacted and you can't barely even see any of these stuff that from these reports. And it seems like the same thing here. So I feel like the comments are going to be what I expect, and that's like, yeah, what do you expect? They're going to, they're, they've been doing this for years. This is a continuation, but because of social media and because of the idea that you can get someone to say, no, wait, I saw this, and it catches a little bit more heat. Is that a game changer, or is that just a little bit of an extra added tool? What do you guys think? Put your comments in there. Let me know. As I say all the time. If you're brand new to the channel, please subscribe to it. You can go to our Apple Podcast feed, Spotify feed. Those are in the description, and that's all under the Down to Earth banner. We also do a show on Tuesdays, which is our long-form show, where we do just about an hour. I have Avi Loeb on the show this week. If you want it on audio, all you have to do is subscribe to the feeds. If you want to watch that on video, then you head on over to my other channel, the Christian Harloff channel. Thanks for joining us here. Appreciate it. Thanks to Pavel, and we'll see you later.